Hello everyone and happy Easter. We have made it. Our journey through Lent has come to an end and we are now beginning a brand new liturgical season, the Easter season. So when you come to Mass this weekend or when you watch Mass from home, you're going to see a couple things that look different. Um, you're going to see the altar beautifully decorated with flowers. You're going to see um, Father wearing white and the altar being decorated with white linens. You're also going to see that the crucifix, the cross, is no longer covered with that big purple drape. Um, and we're going to do a couple things that we haven't done in a while. Um, one of them is we're going to sing the Gloria. Now, if you came to Holy Thursday liturgy, or if you watch that from home, we sang the Gloria for the first time since before Ash Wednesday on Thursday. But if you didn't go to that one, this weekend, this Sunday, is the first time that we're singing Glory to God in the Highest again. Um, on Holy Thursday, we, we ring bells when we do that as well. So as we enter into Mass, our readings are also going to be slightly different. So we've told you, always told you, that the first reading comes from the Old Testament. And then the second reading is usually a letter from the New Testament, and then the Gospel is one of the four Gospels. But during the Easter season, the first reading also comes from the New Testament. So we're going to be hearing from the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles is an amazing book in the Bible. It's actually the sequel to Luke's Gospel. It's Luke's Gospel, Part 2. And in Acts of the Apostles, we learn about the first Christians, how they established uh, the church after Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. So in our first reading, we hear Peter proclaiming the truth about what just happened with Jesus Christ. He proclaims to the people about how Jesus preached and healed, how he suffered, died, and rose from the dead. And he's inviting more and more people to come and follow Jesus and to be Christians. Our second reading comes from a letter, the first letter of John. And in it also, he is recounting for us um, what Jesus did for us and what it means to be a Christian. And then the gospel account that we're reading this year is from the gospel of John. In every single um, resurrection account, Mary Magdalene is the first one to get to the tomb on Sunday morning. And what does she discover when she gets to the tomb. It's empty. Jesus is not there. He is risen indeed. So Jesus was indeed the Son of God, that death held no power over him and could not keep him down, that he was risen from the dead by his Father. And this is such good news for us because, because of Jesus' suffering, and dying on the cross, we know that our sins are forgiven. But because of his resurrection, we know that we too get to rise to new life. That we are not condemned by our sin. And that death is not the end for us either. That we too are called to rise from the dead and live forever. So we get to share in the divine life of God. And the way that we are able to partake of that divine life, the way that all of the amazing blessings that Jesus uh, created for us, gave to us through his Paschal mystery is through our baptism, through the church. So when we are baptized, we die the way that Jesus died in a different way on the cross. We die to our sins and we rise as Jesus did. We rise to new life and we are then a new creation. We are a son or daughter of God. We are a member of his church and we are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So every Sunday is actually a little mini Easter. Sunday is our Sabbath. Every Sunday we celebrate that Christ rose from the dead. We are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. So today rejoice, be merry, be glad, enjoy family and friends share this good news with someone and we'll see you soon